Good evening, good afternoon, good morning to everybody, depending upon uh, what part of the world you happen to find yourself in today. Um, my name is Tim Eldred. Uh, I'm a product marketing manager and a microscopist here at Protochips. I'd like to welcome you all and thank you for being here and joining us uh, for this uh, seminar in our series on electrochemistry for the TEM. Uh, we're so happy to be able to continue this series because it gives us sort of a, a chance to sort of share the knowledge and experience gained by the researchers that are in the protochips community over the years. It gives us a chance to sort of aggregate this knowledge on the technique to uh, dispense to either those just entering the field, people thinking about entering the field, or the people who are already in the field but are thinking about adding in situ uh, TEM to their repertoire. So TEM is a very powerful technique for observing dynamics on this scale in an operando environment. And our community is gonna share that value with you and how they got there. In the future, feel free to sign up for as many webinars in the series as you'd like at protochips.com slash webinar. I will be posting registration links uh, continuing throughout the year. Couple housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, everyone is muted. Please feel free to enter questions in the chat box, however, and I'll read them off to you at the end. And please fill out the survey that pops up at the end so that we can, uh, it just gives us more information to pull information together and pull interesting content together for you in the future, because ultimately what you want to know is what we would like to give you. And I would like to welcome our speaker for this seminar, uh, Dr. Yuki Sasaki. He is a researcher of battery in the battery materials group at Japan Fine Ceramic Center. His focus, his, ah, Sorry, his work focuses specifically on the liquid phase electron microscope observations of electrochemical reactions. Uh, Sasaki-san, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction, Tim. Um, I'm honored to be invited to give a talk here today. Uh, I would like to talk about our research in situ observation of zinc electrode deposition and dissolution using a liquid phase transmission electron microscope. Okay, let me show you the outline of my presentation. Uh, my talk today will have four parts. The first, I will explain what the zinc wear battery is and uh, why we focus on this battery as a post lithium ion battery. Then I will show you the realization issues of the rechargeable zinc wear battery. After that, I will describe our experiment setup of the liquid phase transmission electron microscope and how we observe zinc electrode deposition. Then I will show you our experimental result. And lastly, I will summarize my talk. Okay. Here, recently, the demand for electric vehicles increases year by year, and the competition among the automakers to offer long cruising electric vehicles is also intensifying. This is the comparison of cruising range of commercial available electric vehicles and gasolines and hybrid vehicles. These electric vehicles use the lithium ion batteries. These range are assumed to have an ideal operating environment with a brand new battery, the latest high-end electrodes have a cruising range 600. However, the cruising range is still insufficient compared to the gasoline and hybrid vehicles. Standard electric vehicles can only reach two or 300 kilometers, further widening the gap with the gasoline vehicles. If we use a lithium ion battery that has reached its theoretical limit, we can travel about uh, 800 kilometers. However, this closing range is still shorter than the gasoline and hybrid one. In order to exceed the theoretical limit of batteries, it is indispensable to develop an innovative storage battery with a new operating system. Uh, post lithium ion batteries. Here shows the conversion of the energy density of four commonly discussed post lithium ion batteries sodium ion batteries and the lithium sulfur batteries and solid state batteries 
and lithium air batteries. The lithium air batteries have a high energy density and uh, particularly excellent in gravimetric energy density, which is important for in vehicle batteries because the actual weight of the cathode in the metal air battery is close to zero. It means that the oxygen in the air works as a cathode material in these batteries. The light figure shows the theoretical specific energy of the various metals, uh, met metal air batteries that are coming to this. The lithium metal is strong anode uh, since it has the highest theoretical specific energy and the high cell voltage. However, the metal lithium has the inherent instability when exposed to air and aqueous solution. The both magnesium, magnesium and the aluminum air batteries uh, will utilize, can utilize with the aqueous electrolyte and have energy density comparable to lithium air batteries. However, their low reduction potential lead to rapid self-discharge and poor chromic charge efficiency. So compared to these metals, zinc is more stable and can be charged more efficiently in aqueous electrolytes. Okay, next, I will explain about zinc air batteries. Here is the schematic illustration of the zinc air batteries and its futures. The zinc air battery consists of a metal zinc electrode as a anode, a catalyst with the carbon as a cathode, and the aqueous potassium hydroxide solution as an electrolyte. In a rough idea, this battery converts the oxidizing energy of zinc into electrical energy. Compared with the lithium, the zinc is inexpensive and more abundant in the earth crust. In addition, the zinc air batteries are water-based batteries that are no risk of ignition or uh, combustion. More importantly, the zinc metal within the metal air battery has relatively high specific energy. However, the zinc air battery are still used only in, as non-rechargeable batteries. So what is the difference between the rechargeable batteries and the non-rechargeable batteries? We classify this difference according to whether the charging reaction restores the batteries to their original pre-charging state. In ideal rechargeable batteries, it is expected that the opposite electrochemical reaction will progress when the charging and discharging like this. On the other hand, the non-rechargeable battery cannot be completely restored due to many side reaction. Uh, especially in zinc air batteries, we found the electrolysis as a more major reaction. In addition, the various issues remain in the charging process of zinc air batteries. Here, the issues of the typical uh, rechargeable zinc air batteries In the, the issues of the anode, the first, the risk of short circuit due to the zinc electrode. In addition, the gas is generated by the aqueous electrolytes, electrolysis. These photographs, uh, optical microscope images of the zinc electrode deposition with the cathode of the left side and the zinc anode on the right side. As time passed, 
the dendrite grow from the zinc anode as as if the tree grow branches and uh, finally dendrite touched the cathode so we can also find the gas generation here there is also a problem with the cathode the on the cathode of the zinc air battery oxygen in the air is reduced during the discharge and the hydroxide is oxidized during the charging to generate oxygen it is necessary to realize the, this opposite reaction with one catalyst also the complex three phase interface at the cathode is involved in the efficiency of the battery reaction among these issues we are investigating the mechanism of dendrite generation towards the suppressing dendrites so for various challenges have been taken to explore the origin of zinc dendrite but generally we perform the cycling voltammetry or charge and discharge cycle measurement for evaluating the batteries this these are the suitable method for investigating to the uh, behavior of the whole body cell. Recently, we have been paying attention to in such observation techniques that directly observe these electrochemical measurements. It helps to link these measurements with the micro microscopic changes. For example, this is an in such observation with an optical microscope demonstrating that some organic additives uh, suppress the dendrite. The light figure uh, also com uh, captured the metal additive works suppression uh, dendrite growth using the transmission electron microscope. Unfortunately, this paper uh, may found the different behavior from the pure zinc growth uh, because dendrite contain the gold. And furthermore, the detailed mechanism of dendrite generation and the function of additives has not been clarified in these studies. Therefore, we try to clarify the case uh, uh, cause of the dendrite by in such observation using the electron microscope in a similar way. Okay, next I will explain our uh, experimental method. Today I will show you in such observation result of the zinc electro deposition using the liquid phase transmission electron microscope, uh, which is combined the transmission electron microscope or TM uh, with a liquid cell type specimen TM holder. Okay. The TM is a microscope that uses an electro beam as a reference wave instead of the light source. It enables high resolution observation beyond the limits of an optical microscope. Normally, we evacuate uh, the TM comes to avoid the scattering of the electron beams. So TM observation requires the sample dried. So even if we bring the water into the TM, water will evaporate and dry immediately. Therefore, we use a liquid cell type specimen holder called the Poseidon. Okay. Uh, we use the Poseidon holder as a liquid cell holder produced by ProChips. This Poseidon holder seals and traps the liquid with O-ring and the two silicon substrate. The silicon nitride membrane on the substrate allow electron beams to pass through, but do not allow the water evaporate. So we can observe the in liquid inside the holder uh, through this membrane. 
Another feature of this holder is the electrical connection with the potential start outside the TM. By using a silicon substrate with electrode patterns, so-called electrochemical chips, e-chips, we can control a bias between the electrode on this chip. In this work, we attempted to observe the electrochemical reaction directly using an e-chip with a platinum electrode. I think it is a little difficult to Im imagine our experiments, so I will show you the operational image of liquid phase TEM. The center is a TEM, and the liquid cell holder was inserted there. A syringe pump and the potential set were connected to the holder, and the bias was controlled by the uh, an, an external PC. Then the electrochemical reaction proceeded on the electrode of the E chip, and we observed this with the electron beams. Okay, then I will explain the target material in this presentation. We want to uh, reproduce the electrochemical reaction in zinc wire batteries by using the liquid phase TM, but this time we observed the electrode deposition and dissolution of zinc from zinc surface aqueous solution. There are three reasons why we choose zinc surface aqueous solution instead of potassium hydroxide aqueous solution. First of all, the aqueous solution of potassium hydroxide is corrosive, damaging our specimen holder or TM columns. The zinc surface solution has less negative effect for TM and the holder. And uh, secondary, the simple zinc electrode deposition can be expected in zinc sulfate. Uh, these are simplified the reaction in each electrolyte. We can describe the electrode deposition from zinc surface by the exchange of the electrons between the zinc ions and the zinc metals. Conversely, uh, the zinc electrode deposition from the potassium hydroxide involves a complicated reaction process. The liquid phase TM has just begun with a short story, and it is still difficult to discuss without artifacts. Therefore, we recommended the simplest reaction. Zinc electrode deposition from the potassium hydroxide includes the process of electrode deposition from zinc sulfate. So zinc sulfate solution is suitable for examining the general properties as a first step. The surgery using the zinc sulfate aqueous solution suppress the generation of zinc oxide at the oxidation reaction. This also avoids the complication and helps our analysis. Okay, next I will explain the setting of our electrochemical chips. We use the three electrode method with the working electrode and the counter electrode pattern to surround the working electrode. The difference electrode is lo located between the working electrode and the counter electrode. And all electrodes are patterned by platinum. The working electrode pattern on the observation window of silicon nitride membrane. So we can observe this like this. The, since the oxidation reaction on the platinum electrode generates the oxygen gases, so we deposit the zinc on the counter electrode in advance by a vacuum a deposition of brass wire. I will show you the video about the effect of the zinc deposit later. 
Okay, then I will introduce our in situ videos of the gene collector deposition. Okay, this is the TM image of the protein working electrode in zinc sulfate aqueous solution. In order to prevent the electron beam irradiation damage, the dose rate during the uh, observation was kept to less than 300 electron power square nanometers. This shows the edge of the working electrode with a uh, reduction electric current without the zinc covered, uh, covering on the counter electrode. The black uh, semicircle in the figure is a platinum working electrode. The gray area is a field with a 0.1 mole per liter uh, zinc sulfate aqueous solution. And the counter electrode is out of the uh, observation window. With the electric current flows, the oxygen gas generated at the counter electrode pushed away the solution from the observation window. Then the electrode lost the electrical contact and the measurement suddenly stopped because of the over voltage. The zinc coupling on the counter electrode suppressed gas generation and enable us to continue the measurement. Here, this is the electro, uh, zinc electrode deposition and there's a contact, uh, constant current with the zinc covered counter electrode. At first, we can see the platinum uh, working electrode and this solution at the zero second. Now, let the reduction current flow to the working electrode. Then we can find the block, black particles uh, from the platinum electrode. And uh, these particles gradually grew and uh, formed a facet. Then, and the needle-like deposits were generated from the edge of the hexagonal uh, particles. And these glue accompanied by the uh, formation of many branches. The actual orientation angle uh, between the dendritic branches was approximately uh, 600 uh, degrees, uh, sorry, uh, 660 degrees. And they are the glowing while maintaining the hexagonal crystal orientation. The, by the way, the, we really get the high resolution image of deposits when the gases are accidentally generated. The, in common sense, the diffraction contrast cannot be obtained when the solution is sufficiently in the observation window. It means that the almost all electrons were scattered by the liquid molecules. So gases make it possible to observe the samples in liquid with high resolution. Of course, note that the data with gases have large artifacts due to the electron beams irradiation damage or uh, something that happened on the liquid gas interface. It's necessary to consider it as additional information. So how will the high resolution image and the diffraction pattern are required to identify the deposit? Here is the TM image of the tip of the dendrite and the, its electron uh, diffraction patterns. All diffraction spots indicate the crystal structure of hexagonal zinc metals. And from these figures, the orientation of the crystal corresponding to the TM image and the diffraction image is different because the dendrite quickly dissolved when the electron beam was focused to, the, to get the diffraction pattern. This is one of the most annoying the artifacts that make, makes our analysis difficult. Okay, next, 
After growing the dendrite in the Poseidon holder, we took out the e-chip to perform the electro uh, elemental mapping using the scanning electron microscope or SEM EDX. Zinc and the oxygen were detected in dendrite. And we found that the dendrite did not have any other element. It, it was not define, definitive uh, evidence because it, it is difficult to completely prevent the oxidation of the dendrite when bringing sample into the SEM. However, we, we know that the electrochemical reaction in zinc sulfate was, has a difficulty in depositing the zinc oxide. Therefore, these results suggest that the dendrites are identified as hexanal zinc metals. Okay. The hexanal zinc is the main phase at room temperature and pressure. It also found on the platinum work for dendrite growth. This showed the crystal structure and the anisotropy of hexagonal zinc. The, these are in good agreement with the particles grown from the electrode in the early stage of zinc electrode deposition. It means that the dendrites are hexagonal, dendrite and hexagonal particles have the same crystal structure. Therefore, we conclude that the zinc dendrite are not caused by thermal stability. In other words, the dendrite may have formed by kinetic effect. Next, I will show you the result of repeating the zinc electrode deposition and dissolution while the reversing the current. In this video, firstly, the reduction current generates the dendrite and then the oxidation current dissolves the zinc deposits. At this time, the dendrite remained undissolved and the reaction stopped when the zinc detached from the electrodes. By applying the reduction current, zinc were deposited again, uh, like this on the platinum electron surface. The, finally, the tip of the uh, dendrite mainly glue uh, after contact with the residue on the area cycles. Interestingly, the dissolution process of dendrite did not proceed uh, from the tip of the dendrite by, but from the root part of the dendrite near the electrode. In the sense of ordinary electric uh, polishing, the reaction process for the smoothing the surface roughness of the electrode. However, our results showed a different tendency in this sense. This phenomenon suggests the kinetic effect are also involved in zinc dissolution process. Okay, as a last topic of my talk, I will introduce a comparison of zinc electrochemical measurement and the observation. We investigated the relationship between the each reaction and the potential by associating them. Okay, also we cl clearly observed the process of dendrite formation. We could not uh, quantitatively evaluate the electrochemical data collected during the observation. As shown here, we often found the zinc deposition even under open circuit voltage condition. This instability of the potential applied to the electrode in our previous system hindered the precious analysis of corresponding electrochemical data. Such instability is caused by the 
in complete isolation of the electrochemical system from the microscope, any TM specimen uh, holder must be under the under an applied the electric bias rather than the ground potential uh, for the touch sensor to function. Therefore, electrochemical electrode uh, for liquid phase TM observation must be isolated and uh, floated completely from the specimen holder as uh, electrochemical cell uh, con containers. We modified the DC powered potential start system to completely isolate the electrodes. With this electrochemical system, the uh, DLRB, sorry, uh, DLRBility of the uh, electrochemical data collected during the liquid phase TM observation is uh, Sustain three, uh, sus sorry, <laughs> sustain three, uh, sustain a sus sustain tainary, uh, improved. Of course, the potential that uh, gamly uh, in instrument uh, recommended by prototypes is also a good choice. Here we will analyze the changes uh, in potential uh, during the el zinc electro deposition and dissolution. This is the chrono potential gram uh, during the constant current measurement with plus minus one microampere. And this is, uh, it's uh, responding video, the left uh, black vertical axis uh, represents the uh, potential of the working electrode with uh, respect to the platinum reference electrode. When the reduce, reduction current flows, the zinc particles grow um, the platinum working electrode. When zinc is growing, the detection, the electric potential shows at minus 1.5 volt. The zinc particle dissolved due, due to the oxidation current. The electric potential shows an almost constant value of minus 1.3 volt. Here, uh, the result when zinc was completely dissolved and the platinum working electrode was exposed. This black uh, band on the left side of the TM is a wall, wall of the observation window. Unfortunately, such a uh, misarrangement of uh, observation window often bother us. Please, please ignore this. Since uh, this observation was very dangerous uh, experiment involving the oxygen, oxygen uh, gas generation on the working electrode, we were conducting this experiment with half the current uh, 0 0.55 micron ampere. When the oxidation current was applied from the electrode until the zinc disappeared, the electrode potential changed uh, significantly. Okay, well, let's take a closer look at the relationship between the electro electric potential and the TM image. Here are the magnified the views of the uh, plot of the chrono potential gram. The left plot uh, corresponds to the reduction with the zinc remaining on the platinum electrode and the right plot corresponding to the uh, reduction after zinc was completely dissolved. Since the absorb absolute value of the electrode potential uh, fluctuates due to the uh, various factors such as the state of the E-chip and the thickness of the electrolyte. So we cannot discuss using the absolute value of the 
uh, electric potential. However, we can find the changes in the TM image when the potential changes in electric uh, the electro deposition and dissolution when the zinc remains on the working electrode, the potential is almost constant in the each process. On the other hand, the we found the potential changes when zinc is completely dissolved like this. This indicates that the electric potential was observed to be dependent on the surface material of the electrode. In addition, when the zinc is deposited again, we found a higher over potential of the electrode deposition from the platinum electrode on the right plot uh, than the left plot. There are two possibility reasons. Uh, first, the active over potential of the zinc reduction differed on the surface between the platinum and zinc. In other ideas, the oxygen was generated on the platinum electrode at the earlier oxidation. And the, the absorption absorbed the oxygen as the working electrode blocked the supply the zinc ions to the electrode surface. Okay, I conclude today's talk. The, we succeeded in visualizing the zinc electrode deposition and the dissolution by using the TM uh, liquid phase TM system. In this observation, we got the image of initial stage of the zinc dendrite growth, and uh, we found that the zinc dendrite has the same crystal structure of hexagonal zinc, and also we found the root of zinc dendrite dissolved faster than the uh, tip of them. We tried uh, linking the electrochemical measurement to uh, liquid phase TM images. As a result, we found electro surface may affect to electric potential changes and uh, may cause the over potential. Okay, thank you so much for your kind of attention. Thank you for a great lecture. Uh, we have a couple questions to go through here real quick. Uh, and please feel free as we're answering questions to put uh, more questions that you might have for Dr. Sasaki into the questions. Um, one of the questions I have is uh, about the counter electrode and your zinc deposition process. Uh, how did you actually deposit the zinc onto the counter electrode? Uh, you I do not hear you. We may have uh, just lost uh, audio. Uh, can you, uh, your audio cut out? Could you uh, just go back a moment? Um, so how did you deposit the zinc onto the counter electrode? I'm sorry, the audio cut out for a second. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so it seems like uniformity of the uh, the coding would be okay. incredibly critical, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it just, uh, the vacuum deposition of the brass wire okay. using the uh, shadow mask. Uh, we usually use the shadow mask, uh, handmade shadow mask, uh, like a, a sh silicon substrate uh, making the uh, pattern, the work, uh, counter electrode like, like this, uh, okay. making the hole. And were you able to estimate the thickness of the zinc de the zinc deposited on the counter electrode? Uh, about uh, 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 one one mic micron. Okay. Yes. Scroll down. Um, 
If we go back to uh, your growth during the OCV real quick, that's what this question is referencing. This one? Okay. Uh, where you were observing uh, growth during the open circuit potential measurements. Uh, on, uh, oop. It was towards the very end. Yes. Um, is there any way that you've been able to isolate sort of the uh, the electron current that you're putting in from the beam uh, to make sure that that's not how you're generating this deposition. Uh, this this uh, deposition uh, usually uh, found in the uh, the uh, gun valve off. Uh, it means the uh, we. When we uh, using the uh, electron beam by uh, observe the uh, electrode, but uh, when when uh, connect the uh, uh, pot potential start to the uh, holder, the deposition uh, will occur. So uh, it is uh, no there are no influence the electron beam. Uh, irradiation, I think this in in this uh, deposition during the OCV. So to make sure I understood you correctly, you're saying that um, when you would image it without the potentiostat connected, you would get no deposition. But when you connected yes, the yes, potentiostat yes. around the OCV, then you get the deposition. All right. Okay. Cool. okay. That is a good answer. That is a good way of isolating that, actually. Um, you had talked briefly about the dose rate that you were using. Uh, what method did you use to calculate your dose rate for this? Uh, we calculate dose rate using the, uh, 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 how to say, uh, we usually the count the electron uh, beam uh, using the, uh, uh, Little, little bit the uh, uh, exit the holder like this, and the okay. electron beam can uh, pass through the uh, I'll say uh, any any the uh, shield or the holder. The it means the holder of the liquid phase uh, holder. Uh, the scattered the electron beam, so we we need to uh, uh, extract the holder like this. So we can the uh, calculate the electron beam irradiation. The mm -hmm. uh, not, nothing there, and the uh, the calculate the uh, electron beams uh, irradiation using the same con uh, electron beam condition. Yeah, because the scatter, um, like you were saying, the the scattering caused by the liquid cell has caused problems for some people who use uh, just like a phosphor screen to to calculate their dose. You were mentioning actually extracting the holder slightly so you can get the direct beam, um, just to kind of remove that effect. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I've I've worked in 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 uh, similar situations on that. Let me scroll back up through these questions to get to one that we haven't answered. Uh, you were talking about uh, you were inducing the bubble to get the diffraction information. Uh, you also mentioned that were some, there were some drawbacks to working in the bubble uh, and imaging in the bubble. Uh, could you elaborate on the uh, sort of the drawbacks to that technique where you're inducing the bubble to get vacuum imaging again and then refilling? You mean the this purpose? Yeah. Uh, we usually the list set up. <laughs> it means the we cannot uh, uh, throw away the these gases, so we need to refresh the uh, condition. So usually okay. we. Uh, yeah. 
So the the diffraction information was uh, sit you sort of after the after the fact, or I may have misunderstood uh, the slide, and I apologize for that. Um, I'm going to move on to a different question. I think I misunderstood one of their questions, and I apologize. Or three. Um, no, you're fine. You're fine. I think I misread one of the questions here. Uh, when you're talking about the dissolution of the uh, the narrow parts of the dendrites uh, on, I think, slide 22, that was one of the interesting parts to me on the reversibility of it, where uh, you have the, the bottom parts of the dendrites dissolve out, but the top parts don't. Um, do you have any information about the overall reversibility of the reaction or any information uh, if you allow the uh, the potential to be applied and the current to be applied for longer, do the upper parts of the dendrites eventually dissolve or are they sort of permanently deposited? Uh, sorry, I, I cannot understand. The, uh... All right. Um, you mentioned that the roots of the dendrites dissolve first uh, when you uh, mm -hmm. reverse the bias. If you keep the bias reversed, do the top parts eventually dissolve, or are they permanently deposited? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, it, it, we cannot dissolve the uh, of the part particle uh, because uh, this 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 particle, like this one, okay. You can see the this particle uh, move, moved uh, like a fracture. So it means the this particle disconnected uh, from the working electrode. So mm -hmm. if we continue the uh, uh, apply the uh, counter bias, uh, it cannot uh, dissolve. And uh, usually we found the gas uh, generation from the working electrode. Okay. Let me take a look over here. Ooh, I have a question. It's not letting me read. There we go. Um, okay. I think we have... Uh, answered both of these remaining questions on the OCV and the zinc deposition. Um, so if anybody has any other questions they would like to ask, if not, uh, I'd like to thank our speaker uh, one more time. Um, thank you again, Sasaki-san, for this wonderful talk. Uh, and I look forward to seeing the rest of you and you as well uh, in the future seminars. Thank you all for your Thank attention you very tonight. Much. Have a great day.